Well, hello, Alfred Hayes, and it's nice to be here on TNT. Yes, it's Lord Alfred. Lord Alfred, whatever, Alfred Hayes, Lord Alfred Hayes. You know, I feel great because now TNT gets a touch of class brought to the program. Jesse the Body hosting TNT, you know, and I got some great, great guests. The Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, along with Greg the Hammer, Valentine, two very good friends of mine. And a pair called the Killer Bees, Brunzel and Blair. And I'm going to be real interested to get them out here. But getting down to business, you know, the people wonder, is Jesse the Body for real? Can Jesse the Body produce what he promises? You wondered it, didn't you, Alfred I definitely did, yes. You definitely wondered it. Well, now... Get ready, America, because Jesse the Body Ventura has scooped CBS, NBC, ABC, WXYZ, whatever you want to talk about, and bringing out my first guest. Without the revolution, ladies and gentlemen, may I present the one, the only, from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Prince. You know, what a rare pleasure it is, Alfred Hayes, to have his royal badness out here himself, Prince. He's rather a peculiar looking fellow, isn't he? Let me tell you something, he can buy and sell you in a minute. Yes, I understand that. Yeah. Let me ask you, you know, uh, first question, you know, and everybody wonders out there, Prince don't talk. Jesse the body's not going to make Prince talk too much. But I just want to say, you know, I know for a fact that Jesse the Body Ventura is Prince's favorite wrestler. Isn't that right, Prince? Yes. Did you all hear it? Yeah, see that? What do you think of that, Alfred Hayes? He doesn't have a very strong voice. Have you ever heard him sing? Uh, fortunately. Sorry. No, I haven't. You haven't? No. You have not heard Prince sing? No. Just because he's not one of the Beatles or from England, you don't listen to this man? No, it's not that. It's not my type of music. It's not your type of music. Well, let me, uh, you know, it, it's a great honor to have Prince here. And like I said, he doesn't talk a lot, so I'll do most of the talking. But like he said, Jesse the Body's his favorite wrestler. You know, I'll bet you, I'll bet you, Prince, that, uh, that uh, you and I ought to go on a weightlifting program together. What do you think about that? Yeah, I guess so. Sounds good. I could bulk him up to maybe 250 pounds. Can you imagine Prince at a muscular 250 pounds? Well, I'm not going to keep you people hanging around. Prince has a busy, busy schedule. I produced Lord Alfred Hayes. I did what I said I was going to do. I got Prince right on TNT. Prince, thank you very much. Maybe you come back later and perform for us. What do you think about that? That sounds good to me. We'll be back with more TNT. The body has delivered. Yes. with Jesse the Body and Lord Alfred Hayes. You're not doing too bad. And I produced his royal badness, didn't I? (laughs) The one and only prince. The only prince that we care about in America. Yes. We don't care about that one across the Atlantic that you like. But now, getting down to brass tacks. Talking wrestling, talking music, talking money. I want to bring out my next guest, a dear friend of mine, the one and only the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. (laughs) 
Jimmy what's happening. <laughs> Baby, you did it again. I can't. Prince, Prince, you know, I'm, I'm, he's going to come back, isn't he, before the show's over? I believe so. Right, I believe so. Because I got to get the guy's autograph. You did it, man. Number one, Jesse. Now, let Number me ask one. you this, Jimmy. You've been around music. You've been around wrestling music for, what, 20 odd years, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, give a few. You know, did you ever yeah. think that uh, you'd, you'd be out here with Prince? Prince. On the oh, same man, program? Oh, man, unbelievable. You know, this is the greatest day of my life, man. I can't believe that, Prince. Woo! You know, a lot of you people out there, you don't know that Jimmy Hart was into rock and roll real heavy. And I know that for a fact, the band called The Gentry. That's right, baby. Keep on dancing, Keep number on dancing. one. Tell number, us about number it, Number one gold record, four albums, 36 singles, and now professional wrestling. But you know what, Body, I've got a brand new album. You know, I, by the way, I love your new album, too. Thank I you. I love it, that Body, uh, I love that. That's beautiful, baby. Body rolls. No, body rolls. What are you talking oh, about, body rolls? You know, what is he like this for, Jesse? Well, I, thought I don't even, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't know why he's even on the payroll. <laughs> Good, Jeff. Listen, I've got a brand new album coming out. It's called Jimmy Hart Outrageous Conduct. It's got big ones on it, like Barbara Streisand's nose, hippo hips for all the big fat people out there that scream and yell at us everywhere we go. A new one called Eat Your Heart Out, Rick Springfield, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, everything's looking pretty good, man. You know, got great wrestlers, Greg the Hammer, Valentine, King Kong Bunny, the Hart Foundation. You know, I'm sitting on top of the world, the youngest manager in the history of professional wrestling, baby. Can you believe that, Jess? I believe anything coming from you, Jimmy. <laughs> You're number anything one, Jess. Anything at all, you know. I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you what, Mr. Hart, he, he is something else. Because I think the thing that you show me the most, Jimmy, when you're out there is enthusiasm. You're a very enthusiastic manager. You get involved. You know, you see a lot of managers like Arnold Skoland and people <laughs> like that that sit and rest on their laurels of 30 years ago. Well, you know what, Jess? I'm in the trenches with my men every night. Whenever you see Greg Valentine, you see Jimmy Hart. If you see Bundy, you see Jimmy Hart. If you see the Hart Foundation, you see Jimmy Hart, baby. 24 hours a day, I work on my foundation, the Hart Foundation. The Hart Foundation. That's now, right. I want to ask you a quick question about the Hart Foundation. How hard was it to search to find a heart and a Neidhart to be so devastating and have the same names? What do you think of that, Alfred Hayes? Yeah, I what do you it think? It was of an that? unusual uh, coincidence. Is it coincidence? <laughs> no, baby. Let me tell you something right now. This is the future in professional wrestling. Jimmy Hart, like I said, the youngest manager in the history of professional wrestling with the WWF. And we're building the Hart Foundation. We're building this into a dynasty, baby. And you can bank on that. A force to be reckoned with in the WWF. And I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm real impressed. And as the quote goes, Jesse, the body don't impress easy. Right. But I'm real impressed with King Kong Bundy. Oh, isn't he big? He isn't he big, baby? Awesome. We're ready. To we're me, ready. he is the giant of wrestling. But now, we'll be back. In a little while, right after this, with Jimmy Hart's main man, Greg the Hammer Valentine. <laughs> Jimmy, I alluded to earlier, we're going to bring out your main man, oh, who I consider one. your main man in wrestling today. I mean, this guy is tough. He's intelligent. I love to watch him wrestle. I love to listen to him interview. Don't you, Lord Alfred Hayes? I must agree with you. He is a, an excellent wrestler. He makes a lot of sense when he speaks. And I say this rather reluctantly, he's very fortunate to have a manager as the mouth of the South. <laughs> Without further ado, let me introduce the one and only Greg the Hammer Valentine. <laughs> You know, there was a song written by Warren Zavon called The Werewolves of London, and there's a little verse in there where they say, and his hair was perfect. I think that fits you, Greg. Perfect, that's right. Thank you, Jesse. This is a first for you, right? Yeah, this is a first. Where's Vince McMahon? Who cares? <laughs> you know, I'm so used to his insults out here, but you are a true professional wrestler like myself, a man that's gonna give credit where credit's due. I heard you mentioning about the fact that you like to hear me talk, you like to hear me wrestle, 
You like my long blonde hair. And I tell you, you also like rock and roll. We're That's both right. into rock and roll. That's right. That's what motivates me. Ten long months in our continental heavyweight. Let show. me interrupt for a second, Greg. We got some film footage right here. Greg the Hammer Valentine going against right. Ricky Steamboat. What a match. Joined right in progress, Daddy. Greg the Hammer Valentine. Talk about close. Oh, I couldn't hold him. No. One, uh, two. Oh, two and three quarters there. What a close count. Whipping now by the champ. Wow, right to the lower abdomen and right out once again on the concrete floor. Go Steamboat. Imagine a dragon out there having to listen to that idiot with a megaphone. Steamboat taking quite a bit of punishment. Grady voice Jimmy Hart. Count up to about eight. Look at this, wide open. Valentine doesn't want him in there. It's obvious. <laughs> what was your first clue? <laughs> Come on, karate kid. Get up now. Oh. Come on, Mr. Karate. <laughs> we got it now, baby. You've got to be quick. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, Valentine dishing out some heavy punishment as once again the dragon ends up on the concrete floor here in Madison Square Garden. Not the place to be. Jimmy Hart, give me a break. Give me. Well, this individual is not through by a long shot, regardless of what the mouth has to say. He comes within grabbing distance of that megaphone. I'm going to have it. <laughs> Guess whose picture's there? The mouth of the south. Right. Capacity crowd. Oh, work. 23,000 plus, plus another four or 5,000. On hand at a felt form at Madison Square Garden. Intercontinental title events. Frank Valentine, Ricky Steamboat, the Dragon, and we've got a shootout. Absolutely, blow for blow. Look out now, both men inside the ring and both men lowering oh, with a, everything they've got. What a slugfest. Oh! The Dragon with the upper hand now. Unbelievable. Sends Valentine in for the ride. Wow! What a karate shot right to the throat. He can smell it. The Dragon, Ricky Steamboat, can smell victory. Down goes the champ, down for the cover. He won't get him that way. We've got 23,000 people on our feet here, and I'm certain the rest of the contingent in the felt forum perhaps the same. Well, they're looking for a new champion. If anybody can do it, this youngster can. He's got all the tools. Oh, what a devastating elbow. Valentine in a heap of trouble. He is out. Why is Steve taking his time? Steve going out. Up to the top, perhaps. Uh -oh. Took too much time. Look at Valentine. He's waiting for him, Gene. He's up on his feet. High cross body. One, two. No, foot in the ropes. Well, we're in the battle zone here. Now I, I catch a boot from the referee. Oh. Look out, suplex. Oh, jarring suplex. Took some of the starch out of the dragon with that one, I'm sure. Valentine having trouble making it to his feet. Understandably so. Champ going out from this capacity crowd. Steamboat, look out, elbow. Wow, what an elbow. Valentine going to try it again. Oh, and he did. This could be it. No, just kicked out at the last moment. What a tough youngster. Valentine gonna go work on that leg again. Here he goes. Oh, he got kicked off right into the corner head first. Valentine in dream world somewhat. Ran right into a double shot. 
What is Ricky Steamboat tremendously resilient? Oh, elbow. Oh, to the head. Oh, look at that shot to the back of the net and over the top goes the chin. Look at bewilderment on his face, Gene. Well, I'll tell you something. You know, that was a tough, tough match, Greg. I got a question for you on Ricky Steamboat's tactics, Greg. That karate stuff, I've brought it up before. I think it's illegal. Give me your opinion. Well, I've known Steamboat for a long, long time, probably 10 years, and wrestled him that long. But all of a sudden, he took off for several years. He uh, retired from professional wrestling. At least he said he did. But the man went out and practiced karate. Now, that has been my main complaint about wrestling Rick Steamboat is because of the karate. That has nothing to do with professional wrestling. The man hit me with everything. It was lucky that I was still standing. I was kind of knocked out, as you would say, knocked out standing up. But I just proved right there that I not only can take it and dish it out, I can withstand any type of combat. And karate, judo jitsu, or whatever you call it, Rick Steamboat, that's not going to win you the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. Being a wrestler, using wrestling moves, and being a vicious competitor like myself may make you a champion someday, you know but not else? over my body. You know what else I noticed too, Greg? I think he looks horrible in them long tights. Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> What's he trying to prove? He's trying to look like Bruce Lee or something? Oh, yeah. He's a copycat. Like I said before, I wish I knew where the man was coming from. I would have beat him a lot faster that night in Madison Square Garden. Yeah. I well, want to like, say one thing, though. He is a good competitor. Oh, definitely. And like you said, he's been in hiding for a couple of years. He brings out all this karate stuff, and he figures he's going to catch everyone off guard. Well, Hammer, I'm happy to say that he didn't catch you off guard, I don't believe. He'll never catch the mouth of the South off guard. Never, and I doubt if he'll ever catch Jesse the Body Ventura off guard. But Alfred Hayes, I'll bet he'd catch you off guard. I'd like to say something at this juncture. We I don't have time for you, Alfred Hayes, well, right now. You don't because you're afraid of what I have to say. I'm never afraid of anything you got to say. But I'll tell you what. All you people out there, you want to vote for Manager of the Year. You want to vote for Jimmy Hart. You want to... Vote All for right. Fred Blassie. There it is, Manager of the Year, Post Office Box 1538, Greenwich, Connecticut, 06836. And we will be back in a minute with Vince McMahon himself. You know, it, this is going to be a real classic appearance, my next guest. I've been waiting for this one because now I'm on this side of the desk, and my next guest will be on that side of the desk. I've been waiting for this, so let's get on with it. Ladies and gentlemen, Vince McMahon. <laughs> First of all, Vince, I want to tell you, have you ever seen a feathered boa before? Yes, Jess, I've, I've seen a, a number, a variety of those, as a matter of fact. I mm. raise them on my farm. You raise them? Yeah, feathered boas. Very nice. Yeah. Let me ask you something. How's it feel, sitting on that side of the desk? Different. That's for sure. Very different. <laughs> Let me ask you this. How do you think I'm doing? Uh, I think admirably. Actually, I think you're doing quite well. I mean, if uh, Joan Rivers can substitute for Johnny Carson, I think this is <laughs> very appropriate. I, you're, you're doing an excellent job, I think. However, I, I do question uh, some of your tactics, as a matter of fact. I think that, uh, that there's a possibility, tactics. maybe even a strong possibility, that you are attempting to pull the wool over the eyes of Americana. I think that just possibly this prince that uh, you had as your guest, I think perhaps this prince is a hoax. A what? 
And I don't a think ho- that- you doubt you say that Jesse the body is a hoax and that I would bring a hoax onto this program. Well, let me tell you something real fast, Vince McMahon. We want to take a look at you when you did your first program. I've got some vintage footage, vintage Vince McMahon interviewing Gorilla Monsoon right here. Muhammad Ali was out here at ringside. And a moment ago, your opponent was flying over the top rope, Baron Mikel Sakuna. At that time, Muhammad Ali decided to make it his business to get into the ring and prove that indeed a professional boxer's skills are superior to those of a professional wrestler. But I don't believe he proved that at all. Vince, you know, this guy may be a great boxer, but he don't belong inside that squared circle with a wrestler. That was proven, and that's for sure. This guy is nothing. This guy... This guy doesn't know wrist lock for wristwatch. How can he get in there with a wrestler? All he knows is throw a few lousy jabs. That's not going to stop a wrestler. Let's take a look at the action we saw earlier here with Gorilla Monsoon, who stood back, stood his... Here we see now Muhammad trying to reach you. Quick with a quick lift, Jeff, trying to reach again. He can't reach you. He's too far back. He doesn't want to move in on you. But Muhammad Ali now sticking, jabbing. As soon as I, if you grab a, a boxer, he's finished. A boxer can't fight when you tie him up. Now he's pointing his finger right at you. There What's he saying right to now. you? He's saying, I don't stand a chance with a fighter. There you go. There's your Help fighter. he goes. Gorilla Monsoon has him high in the air. Round and round and round he goes until Muhammad Ali doesn't know where he is. Gorilla Monsoon sitting around and round and then flattens the man out back first. And there, obviously, you could have done away with him had you wanted no to. No question about it. No question about it. He was at my mercy. I could have done anything. I could have, at that point, I could have wrist locked him, broke his arm, broke his leg, broke his neck, done anything. Great boxer, terrible, terrible as a wrestler. Great. Well, let me say this, Vince McMahon. You allude, I, I alluded to the fact this is my first time out here hosting TNT. Yep. How did you feel right there? That had to be one of your first times. You had a lot more hair than I noticed. Uh, probably so, yes. Uh, but nonetheless, I don't think it, it's appropriate to get into hair or lack of, of, of hair. But nonetheless, would you, Jess? But I must say that the one thing, yes, I was very nervous and, and had butterflies. But the one thing that I did not do was attempt to perpetuate some sort of hoax that I think you're doing here with this Prince situation. You think so? I don't but think this is Prince. You don't think that's Prince? Why? I think Prince is a little shorter than, than this individual. I may be wrong. If I am, I will publicly apologize to you. Well, I think that before this is over, Vince McMahon, you're going to owe me a public apology. Could very well. As a matter of fact, I think that that Prince uh, has changed his hairstyle as well. A totally different hairstyle now than than what we saw earlier on with your proposed, your alleged Prince. Alleged? I cannot believe you would doubt my integrity, Vince McMahon. I can't believe anyone would doubt me. Do you know that when people found out I was going to host this show, Mick Jagger called me? And, wanted, and called you and said what? And wanted to be on the show. Michael Jackson called me, wanted to be on the show, but I decided to scoop everyone. And I got Prince, whom talks to no one but Jesse the Body. And you're sure this is Prince? I'm sure. When was the last time that you saw Prince? About a uh, half hour ago on the show. Prior to that, Mr. Ventura, I mean, are you good friends with Prince? Or, of course. Or- I just can't believe you would doubt me, Vince McMahon. Prince normally travels with an entourage. Uh, It was reported that uh, that this particular Prince uh, showed up, although I guess maybe he can travel incognito. He he showed up uh, in an Ash Rambler with Mississippi plates. Mississippi (laughs) plates. You're sure of this? No, I did not see that with my own eyes, but I I am told that indeed he showed up in an Ash Rambler. You're told that. Well, I think your sources are wrong, Vince McMahon. I think you're just jealous. There are no bodyguards because Jesse here? De, he don't, why would he need a bodyguard with me here? What, do, what am I? Well, that, again, a, a question that you What posed. am I? Vince McMahon, I, I'll tell you what. I don't like your coffee cup. I'm going to take over this show. We'll be back That's in a show? minute without Vince McMahon. We'll be back with Jimmy Funtell. Back, Al 
Alfred Hayes. Yes, it's jolly good to be back, too. And I have to admit, I'm glad Vince McMahon's gone. He had some very... Uh, I can't believe how irate the man is, how jealousy can stoop a man to come oh, on yeah. to me that strong because he's jealous. No, he I was only stating what facts, said. Well, You're doing whatever. very well, though. You're doing very well. Anyway, welcoming to, welcome to TNT... And I'm sure this is his first visit to TNT, just it as is. it's my first time as host of TNT. A real up-and-coming wrestler, a man whom is no stranger to Jesse the Body Ventura, and a man whom I will say possibly possesses the most devastating drop kick in the world of wrestling. Please welcome Mr. Jumping Jim Brunzel. <laughs> Very complimentary, aren't I? Yeah, for a change. <laughs> Jumpin' Jim Brunzel in the World Wrestling Federation. What's in store for Jumpin' Jim Brunzel? Well, I hope, uh, along with uh, Brian, I hope uh, he and myself uh, do very well. We're looking forward You're to a challenge. You're referring, of course, to be Brian Blair. That's true. Okay. We're the challenge of what? The World Wrestling Federation. As tag team competitors. That's right. You're looking now so strictly right now you're going into tag team. That's, That's the way it looks plan right is. now. That's your plan. The master plan. That's right, Jesse. Okay. Well, let me let, let's let's get to some film footage of Mr. Jumping Jim Brunzel in action. Jim Brunzel, I believe against Moon Dog Spot. Let's pick up the action right here on TNT. Well, of course, well, he is close fist over the ropes. Brunzel can, can handle himself in that. Oh, hit. ring my bell. Oh. Boy, Spotting out with a whip. Nice reversal. Hard into the corner. Telegraph that move, James. Youngster's got to be nervous and excited. That's understandable. Well, a long road here. Yes, it has. I have a sneaking suspicion he's going to be around the World Wrestling Federation for a long time. Oh, he's in magnificent shape. Tremendous condition. Collegiate football player. Uh-oh. Spot's going out after him. Look out! Wow, ran his forehead right to these wooden steps. I don't think, I don't think Ronzell is used to really anything like this. I, I guarantee you he is not. Well, you gotta expect anything when you step in the ring with Moondog Spot. Oh, that'll be oh. the end of it. Plus around five big ones. I don't think Brunzel would really care for that kind of a, a victory. No, however. sir. No way, shape, or form. Jerry still out on this one. It has been seesaw, tooth and nail, as they say. Justin, uh, obviously stunned, man. That whammed Jimmy. several times into those steps. And that certainly has taken its toll. I think she was. Look at this now. Got a hold of the foot of the Moon Dog. Well, Moon Dog asked Oh, this. make a wish. Oh, please. Please. Give me a. Oh, just rammed that inner thigh right into the steel post. Yeah, you don't think that doesn't tear up a little tissue? Oh, yeah. Of course it does. Makes it difficult to do everything. Walk, sit down, do anything you want to do. With effective maneuver. Reverse atomic drop by Moondog Spot. Although he's still favoring that left leg. It was rammed into the steel post. But the veteran that he is, look at that. Please, give me a break. Well, Spotty, the ring veteran that he is. I'm certain once Jimmy Brunzel comes out of the shock of it all he's made a good accounting for himself don't get me wrong but as I say when you're not used to, to something like this you have to be prepared for everything mentally physically everything that's can possibly go down you must be ready for or you cannot survive in the World Wrestling Federation and please learn to expect the unexpected it happens all the time Brunzel now with a whip sends Spotty off Oh, went for a hip lock and Spot caught him right again in that very tender lower abdomen area. Press and kick. Oh, that took was a field goal number there. 40 yarder. 
Went back to that reverse chin lock again. Okay, he's better than Blanda. He's wearing this youngster down here. Youngster. I, I, I would imagine that Spotty and uh, Jim are about the same age. I would. Uh, there could be a year or two difference. Try to come out the back door here. You don't want to stay with this guy on top of you no. that long. If any, he'll he smother you. You won't have anything left. You no, know, he'll smother you, sap all the strength right out of your body. And it's not a matter of getting a good night's sleep either. No, under these conditions in this particular arena, you see a lot of guys who thought they were in shape go down to tubes in a hurry. Spotty for the ride. Jim drops down over the top. Nice leg trip. Beautifully executed. Oh, he's going to work on that left leg that he injured. Spitty toehold. Wow. Ran into that right hand. Boy, does Spotty know how to counter. Ooh. Hulkamania. Yes, indeed. It's everywhere. Blatantly choking Jim Brunzel right in front of our broadcast table here at Madison Square Garden. Brunzel coughing. Whoops. One of the. Almost end up with one of the bees in our lap. Close line him on that top rope. Spotty yep. relentless once he gets control. Oh, you know it. Oh, countering. Brunzel down on a knee. Still manages to come up with a little muster on a right to the midsection, then to the jaw. Well, he better muster some offense, Gene. Brunzel for the ride. Drop down quick by Spot. Comes up. Wow. Oh, both men come Double on. header. Oh. Spotty is hurting. And I think Brunzel is just playing out. I think they went head to head, side of their heads, temple area. Both men down. Double count now by the referee. As soon as one of these individuals makes it to his knees, this count should stop. It should stop right now. However, it didn't. He's still counting. Look out. Sneak attack now by Spotty. Wow, what a nice elbow. Brunzel what a match. Caught him. Oh, oh, what beautiful, an uppercut. Beautiful, beautiful uppercut. Both of these men are hurting right now. Either one could take a fall at any given time. But I'll don't tell you, these men have got to be exhausted, both of them. They are, Dean. You don't want to make a mistake at this point. All the way across into that top turnbuckle. A oh. little punishment there, a little payback time. On his crowd starts to buzz with one of the killer Got a bees. handful of tights. Enabled him to get out of there. From behind now, look at this. The 300 pounds plus up. Atomic drop, well executed. That took a lot out of Brunzel. That's a lot of, that's a lot of beef to, <laughs> to hang up in the air. Absolutely, especially when it doesn't want to go. Another nice forearm. Spotty now with a whip in. Telegraphed that. Oh. For a back body drop. Spotty caught him with that elbow. And Spot now in control. No reversal. The last second. Beautiful Ooh. drop kick. Oh. Right and a kisser. I hooks the leg. He's going to get him. Oh. What a fine drop kick. Jumping Timmy Brunzel. And boy, these fans love him. Did you see that flying drop Exciting. kick? Exciting. Let's get the word. Boy, is that young man happy. Here is your winner, jumping Jim Bronzel. Let's go back in time just a few moments ago and take a look at this beautiful maneuver by jumping Jim. Drop oh, down. Look at Spot, how beautiful. agile he is, Gene. Look Whoa. at that shot. Oh, my word. No. Well, as I alluded to earlier, Possibly maybe the most devastating drop kick in wrestling today you possess jumping Jim Brunzel and Jesse the body calls it like it is But I do have one question What's that? Those tights those trunks yeah. That's just uh, your personal opinion. That's Brian and uh, my new trunks the killer bees yellow and black striped those colors clash. Alfred Hayes, you'd never see Jesse the body with clashing colors, would you? Oh, gosh. clashing colors. You shouldn't have asked that question, Jesse. <laughs> shouldn't have asked that question. But I'll tell you something, just going back to the drop kick. I saw Jim Bronzel in Kansas City about seven years ago, and I knew then that his one big weapon was that devastating drop kick, and it has really won him honors all the way along. And mark my words, in the World Wrestling Federation, it will take him a long, long way. 
Let me ask you so. one question, Jimmy Brunzel. In your opinion, how high do you think you can go with that drop kick? How high? Yeah. You mean if I were Could to... you drop kick Andre the Giant in the face? You think you could? Uh, I think I possibly could. You think so? Mm -hmm. I'm just asking. I don't know. He's been I was a, I was a high jumper in college, so uh, I didn't make seven feet, but I came real close. Interesting, interesting. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to be back on TNT here with Jumpin' Jimmy Brunzel's partner, one Mr. B. Brian Blair. And together they form a, a newly formed tag team called the Killer Bees. And we'll also be back to prove Vince McMahon wrong. Prince is going to sing. More TNT Lord Alfred, our guest jumping Jimmy Brunzel, and now we're going to bring out the other half, as I said earlier, I alluded to it earlier, of a new tag team combination formed here in the World Wrestling Federation, and they like to call themselves the Killer Bees. So let's bring on the other half of the Killer Bees, one Mr. B. Brian Blair. <laughs> Brian, I got to tell you one thing, jealousy will get you nowhere. No, it's not a question of jealousy, uh, Jesse Venture, or as Vince what is referred it a, to you uh, what is earlier, it a question Joan of? Rivers. Uh, well, I heard you crack on uh, my partner, jumping Jim Brunzel's uh, nice black and yellow striped tights, and you've got a lot of nerve sitting in there with what you have on. Well, let me tell you something. Jesse DeBody can dress any way he wants, and no one dares to criticize him. It's just that no one cares, Jesse. Oh, they care. Uh, what what, what I'd like Brian. to tell you about... Look, it, in I'm, the don't place. interrupt me right now. We got a film segment coming up here right now. Let's look at the Killer Bees in action. Then we'll be back, and then we'll talk. Here they are, the Killer Bees, Brunzel and Blair. Brunzel... On the outside on the apron, and B. Brian Blair to start things off. His opponent, Steve Lombardi. Blair, Brunzel, long life, and can they really move, Bruno? Brunzel and Blair will make a fantastic team because they both have lightning-like speed in all the moves that we're seeing right now by Blair. Beautiful moves on Steve Lombardi. On the other hand, you have a very big and powerful Dave Barbie. Oh, look at this. Yeah, I love to see that. That is such beautiful... A technician at ring, uh, Brian Blair, and we'll see the same of Brunzel. Uh, almost in a pinning combination moments ago, Steve Lombardi. Little consultation moments ago by Brunzel and Blair. They really have their stuff together as a tag team, and into the ring for the first time, jumping Jim Brunzel. No! Whoop. That was a nice move from an arm bar. He comes up front and he catches him into a beautiful monkey flip. Reversal. Reversing again. Side headlock. Lombardi, the aggressor of the two, to the ropes. Over. Lombardi right back at Brunzel. Wow. Nice maneuver by Jim Brunzel. I'm surprised to see Lombardi back up on his feet. Leap clock. Oh, wow. Forget about it. A cover. Oh, almost. Foot on the bottom rope. That's what saved him, that foot on the ropes. Whew. Brunzel and Blair will give you action, perhaps <laughs> more action than you would ask for uh, if your opponents. Ooh, my. What Lombardi's thinking about now is how do I get to the other corner and tag out? He wants out of there. But yet, Blair and Brunzel have been doing a very good job of keeping Lombardi away from his own corner. Uh-oh. And quick tags as well. Ooh, an elbow. Forearm to the head. 
And Blair. And receiving in the regular face there. Lombardi had an opportunity to tag out, chose not to. Yeah, that, I couldn't understand that, although I think he just did tag out. Now here comes a big, powerful Barbie, Dave Barbie. Uh -huh. Right away, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, misses with the elbow. Tag is made now. Brunzel in on Dave Barbie. Forearm to the chest, and Barbie surprisingly going and caught him right in the breadbasket. Trying to set him up, Brunzel now. Barbie off the rope. What a drop kick! Beautiful drop kick right under the chin. Oh. All four wrestlers in the ring. Referee will have to do a little here to maintain some order. <laughs> Referee, I think, pretty much ignoring what's going on over in the far corner. Yeah, there's all four in the ring, and that's a no-no. Uh, they should be getting out, one of them anyway, Blair or Brunzel, because they could get disqualified here, too. Sleeper hold. Brunzel with a sleeper hold on Big Dave Barbie. And it looks like Barbie's going down. The big man, I think, is close to going out. That's about it. I would think so. The big man is going down. It's all over. Very impressive, very impressive. I, I have one question, Mr. B. Brian Blair. Where did killer bees originate from? Well, Where'd that come from? First place, uh, Jesse, you know, bees stick together. And Jim and myself, we stick together. And as far as killer bees go, you know, I consider Jim and myself both pretty nice guys, but unfortunately, uh, we've got to step into the ring with people like you sometimes, and. Uh, we don't mind getting nasty when we have to because that's what wrestling's about. And as far as outside the ring, gentleman Jim Brunzel is a gentleman. Myself, I consider myself a gentleman. And Jesse, you can finish the statement. And I consider myself a gentleman. And the gentleman that Jesse the body is, we're gonna be back and we're gonna thrill everybody. Jumping Jim Brunzel, B. Brian Blair, Lord Alfred Hayes, everybody will get thrilled because Prince has agreed to perform. Prince is going to sing. Vince McMahon, eat your heart out. Prince will be back performing in a minute. We're back. And as I said before, Prince has agreed to perform. Now bear in mind, this group over here is not the revolution, but Prince is going to try it anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, Prince! Now we know he can dance, now he's going to sing for us. Prince without the revolution. Wait a minute, Ben. Get it straight, man. This guy is one of the great, the greatest performer in the world right now. Come on. Now they've done it. What? Oh man, now they've done it. Look at what that lousy band has done. They've caused the greatest entertainer in the world today to storm off. What kind of position All does right, that put now, me in? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but now you've done it, Mr. Ventura. What? It was thought earlier on that this was not Prince. Haircut was different. Uh, he was too short. Arrived in, 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 a, in a small car, unprotected, no bodyguards. I would like for you to know that a call was made to the management of Prince in Minneapolis, Minnesota. They have assured us that this man was not Prince. What? As You're telling me that that ain't Prince? You're telling me I don't know Prince when I see Prince? As a result of that, we would like to apologize on behalf of Jesse Ventura, on behalf of the network and TNT, for perpetrating what apparently was some sort of fraud. Fraud? You're calling me a fraud? You're calling everything I do a fraud? I'll tell you what, McMahon, you can take your show and you can shove it. I've had oh. enough. 
And this is the way you debut as a host of TNT. Jesse Ventura, that's despicable. That was a despicable act, Vince, and I'm ashamed of him. I'm ashamed of everything that happened here, but he is to and blame. And again, we apologize for Jesse Ventura's actions. That was not Prince. No way. Absolutely impossible. Well, an unusual ending. <laughs>